And now, Daljit Dhaliwal. Paul Jay is a Canadian journalist and filmmaker who combined that experience to build an intrepid television network called Independent World Television. The result is an online network called The Real News. It makes a point of steering clear of government and corporate funding. Paul joins us to talk about why and how it started and his ambitious plans to dominate the international news market. Paul, welcome to Foreign Exchange. Uh, thank you. Uh, I dominate uh, maybe, uh, maybe in 25 years. We'll <laughs> okay, well, so long as you've got the, the long-term plan, hey? So Actually, what... for, for, sorry, from the beginning, it's been go big or go home. So we, we have a few years, but we do want to go big. Right. So what prompted you to start the Real News Network? And I'm kind of curious about the term Real News Network. I mean, what's wrong with the news that we have? Um, well, the, the reason I started the network was because I didn't think we were getting news about actuality and fact-based news. Um, it comes primarily out of my experience of running the main debate show on television on CBC in Canada and the lead-up during the Iraq War. It was rather obvious that most of television news in the United States, but also in much of the rest of the world, had become kind of an echo chamber for propaganda. And the, the facts on the ground were pretty clear. Even the day Colin Powell spoke at the UN, one could have done the reporting then that, that what he said wasn't true. Um, it led us into a war, and the same thing's happening again now. Um, so I gave up being one of the more successful independent producers in Canada. Uh, I had, had a daily television show. I have produced 30 long-form documentary films. Last film was I shot in Afghanistan. Um, I started the Hot Docs Television uh, Film Festival in Toronto, which is now the largest documentary festival in North America. But from a very personal point of view, uh, I think we're heading towards kind of a perfect storm. If one looks at the growing tensions with Iran and, and, and the possible, uh, possibility of an attack on Iran, the uh, situation in Iraq uh, and uh, Afghanistan, uh, this economic crisis that could be far more severe than what we're feeling. I think the effects of it are being mitigated until the election mm -hmm. and, and climate change. Um, I just couldn't see living a normal life after that. <laughs> and, and I'm certainly not living a normal life now. Right. So let's go back um, to 9-11 uh, and pre-war Iraq coverage. Where do you think that the media fell down? I mean, you talked about that time when Colin Powell was at the United Nations and delivering his his speech. Um, what do you think, when did it start to go wrong? Well, it's always been wrong to start with. Um, the, the, if you read uh, Edward R. Murrow's speech that was played at the beginning of the film Good Night and Good Luck, um, his condemnation of American television news uh, 30 years ago uh, was, was rather vigorous. Um, I don't think television news has gotten it mostly right uh, almost from its inception because TV news from its inception was more or less part of a, a, a a, a for profit operation, but the news operation used to be a little protected under CBS. And over the years, it's become more and more of a profit center. So it's been a, a gradual transition to a news operation that's as much about the bottom line as, uh, of corporate news as, as the entertainment department is. But more so, since 9 11, the uh, patriotic fervor, which re was somewhat reminiscent of McCarthyism, um, was so uh, profound in American newsrooms that you had someone like uh, Dan Rather say that if you were to criticize the White House during post 9-11, you would be, be accused, if, it would have been like being a traitor in South Africa, ta South African township, and the quote is, and having a flaming tire of patriotism put around your neck. Now Rather said that to the BBC. Unfortunately, he didn't say it very loudly here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your plans to cover international news in a way that perhaps you feel that it, it, it isn't being covered currently. I mean, I'm assuming that you feel that we're all doing a bad job of covering the rest well, of the world. I, 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 do, I, do, the say, the world well, I do say Americans. corporate news, and, and we do, I think PBS is a much bigger conversation. The economic model does not lend itself to questioning assumptions. And if you watch television news, there's a limit with which they will ask questions or pursue a story. And the limit's primarily defined by the leadership of the two parties. They will critique the Republicans the way the leadership of the Democratic Party critiques, or they'll go after a story vice versa the way the leadership of the Republican Party goes. 
But it, there's so a, you're saying that the politicians are setting the news agenda completely. and the newsrooms completely. are following that news agenda? Completely. Uh, they're, without they're, critiquing anything that they see? They're, they're just sort of passively taking this information on board? No, no, I would say they critique it, but within the narrow limits of the debate established by the, what you could, call the, you could call the official debate. Like right now, if you take uh, this, this statement that uh, General Clark made about uh, McCain's war record and dropping bombs from an airplane doesn't make him eligible to be president. This is not such a big story at a time when the United States and Iran are playing chicken. Seymour Hersh has an article that comes out that says there's secret operations going on in Iran and, and other, there's other verifiable sources about these operations. Um, well, let's, the, take, let's take that story, yeah, for instance, sure. Iran, um, yeah. that they're, they're a speculation, as you say, that they're in the media that Iran may be attacked either by Israel or by the United States. Um, how would you be covering that story in a way that's different to how it's currently being covered? Just well, well, more speculation well, in the press. Yeah, well, well, I would say to start with, we wouldn't allow the national intelligence estimate to disappear into the annals of amnesia. Um, American intelligence agencies said very clearly that the nuclear weapons program, if there was one, ended in 2003. They didn't think there was one now. And even if there was some ability of enrich the enrichment of uranium process to be weaponized, it's probably as much as 10 years out. The, uh, this current administration is pretending like the NIE never happened. Um, the intelligence kind of, and, and the coming out of Israel has been trying to uh, spin a kind of uh, dismissal of it. But this was the view of the American intelligence community. What's proceeding in all the dialogue about Iran is as if it never happened, the NIE report. So to start with, we would keep reminding people, hang on here. There is no evidence, as uh, Senator McCain and Joe Lieberman are saying, that Iran is headed towards a nuclear bomb, might give that nuclear bomb to terrorists. The, the rhetoric that's coming out of, uh, of this, these quarters needs to be defied, questioned, examined. It's not happening on corporate networks. No. Right. And also, in terms of uh, foreign policy coverage, how would you cover uh, the candidates, McCain and Obama, their foreign policy positions? Well, to start with, I think we should take seriously what they say. Um, on Obama's speech, uh, for example, at APEC, Obama reversed himself on some very important issues. He had previously uh, said he, if he'd been at the Senate that day, he would have voted against the Kyle Lieberman Amendment, which was this amendment declaring the Revolutionary Guard as terrorist. But in his speech at the APEC conference, he said that the uh, Iranian Guard had been quite correctly damned as terrorist, which essentially is a reversal of his position. Um, he defended the Israeli bombing of uh, the Syrian installation, which the IAEA says there's no evidence had anything to do with a nuclear program. So what they're saying needs to be taken seriously. Instead, what we see in the presidential uh, election coverage is, is a coverage of advertising campaigns. We're seeing this guy's experience, this guy's for change. We, we cover AdWords as if it's news. And the real world, which is heading towards very, very serious, serious crises, it's like a separate planet. It doesn't get covered. So what we want, and I don't blame the journalists in, in, in the news departments. It's the economic model that restrains people, and that's what we're trying to change. We want to have, if you want, we want PBS without the government subsidy and without corporate underwriting. We want viewer-funded uh, news because then you can, I think, talk about real life. All right, Paul Jay. Well, good luck with your endeavors, and thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you.